Recently, I broke a solar panel, but it got me thinking, do broken solar panels still work? If they don't work, are they dangerous? Well, today we're gonna put this experiment to the test and see how damaged solar panels need to be before they stop working. So make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. So it's time to jerry-rig the heck out of this thing. And you may know I'm not a fan of DIY, but this is gonna be some serious DIY experimentation going on here. But it's okay because I've got some safety glasses and I've got a flame-proof uniform. No, but seriously, don't try this at home. What we're about to do is not technically safe or even legal, maybe, but we're doing it in our own premises under test conditions so that you guys don't have to do it at home. And to be honest, I'm just intrigued to see what's gonna happen because there are three outcomes in my opinion. One, they'll just work as normal. Two, they won't work at all. Or three, they'll catch fire or explode. So let's see what's gonna happen. So I'm just pinching a plug top off an extension lead to wire our inverter to. We're gonna use a solar edge three kilowatt inverter on this. And the reason we're using a solar edge inverter and solar edge optimizers is so that we can monitor how much each panel is generating and that will give us the comparison data that we need of a broken panel versus a normal panel. We're trying to do this as scientifically as possible, although I'm not a scientist, so it's definitely gonna cause rage in the comments among all the real scientists. But the idea is to be able to compare a normal, non-broken solar panel with a broken solar panel, and we've got multiple broken panels of different types of level of damage to test out here. So each optimizer will give us a reading from each panel and we'll be able to see what the difference is. Now, before we get stuck in, I'd like to know what your predictions are. Do you think these broken panels are gonna generate anything or do you think they just won't work at all? In fact, I need to get the fire extinguisher just in case they do catch fire. <laughs> So first step, we've wired a 13 amp plug onto the end of this uh, rubber flex cable. This is going to carry the power from our solar panels into our electrical installation and power up our inverter. Now normally you're not supposed to wire solar inverters on a plug. Balcony solar systems off a plug top and stuff like that in the UK are, are not approved. This is just a temporary setup that we're using to test out this situation. So on the other end of this flex cable, and this is gonna be long enough to go back to our temporary power socket here, we're gonna wire our inverter, and then off the inverter, we're gonna wire the solar panels. Now this is actually a very expensive experiment because I've had to buy a brand new three kilowatt solar edge inverter just to test this out for you guys. So in return, all I ask is that you hit a thumbs up. It really helps to get more videos like this out to our viewers. So that's the AC side wired in. Now for the fun part, the DC side. Let me show you how that's gonna work. So on the bottom of this inverter is a positive and a negative input from these. These are our solar edge optimizers. And basically what happens is we plug each optimizer into the next optimizer and we plug the panel into the optimizer. And we basically create a loop. So the positive comes out of the inverter to the first optimizer, loops in between the optimizers and then the final negative back into the inverter. And we need a minimum of eight optimizers on one string in order for this to work. Now we've knocked up a quick design in the Solar Edge design tool, put the panels at an 80 degree pitch because we're basically gonna be leaning them against the wall here. And it should, in theory, work. So I've gotta get all these strung up, the panels into place, and then we'll be able to switch it on. So I think we're gonna to have to do four broken panels and four normal panels to do like a true test. And also if the broken panels are not generating anything, then the voltage on the string will probably not be big enough and the whole thing will shut down. In fact, solar edge inverters do have a lot of safety features built into them. So it might be that they just come up with an insulation fault and, and our whole test is kind of scuppered, but we'll only know when we start plugging in the panels and commissioning the inverter. So I'm gonna get these all leaned up and into place 
and then we shall try to connect them. I think that's about an 80 degree pitch, roughly. So that's our panels in place. We've got four broken ones there, four good condition ones here. Now we've just got to get all the optimizers connected up and plug them in. Time to crawl down this little tunnel. Oh my goodness, this is like being a kid. It's very exciting. Okay, so with the Solar Edge optimizers, you've got these stickers on them which have QR codes and that's what you use to map them out, which enables you to know which panel uh, is which, essentially. So what I'm doing is on this little cardboard, I'm making a map by just sticking my stickers down, and then we will map those into the Solar Edge system, and we'll be able to know which panel is generating what energy. Last panel, last connection, boom. Now, all of our optimizers are on. We just need a final leg of DC cable from this last panel on the string all the way back to the inverter. Oh! oh. <laughs> Knew that was gonna happen. So, the wind has caught this one. It's not done it any good, that's for sure. Although well, it was already broken. I, don't, I think it's slightly more broken now than it was before. So, going to need to do something to protect this from the wind until we get them properly up and running. The last thing we want is a panel flying across the car park. So we've got these uh, new Staubli Pushfit connectors, MC4s, which I've not used before. And we've got this new Jokari PV Strip Pro that Jokari very kindly sent to us after we met them at the Intersolar event. And uh, I'm quite eager to try these out, let's see. So we can set our little thing here to the appropriate depth. So I think that is about 15 millimeters. Pop our cable in like that. Give it a little twist and just kind of pull. There we go, yeah, and the cores have not been nicked at all. We're gonna push that in there. And that's it. It's in, and then you just twist. There we go, one end done. That was super quick and easy. Let's do the other end. Like that, give it a tug. That is in, solid, and then twist. So that is our last panel connected in to our last optimizer. Now, we connect the other end into the inverter, position our panels, start livening it up. And now for the insane moment of truth. So our solar edge inverter has lights on it, which is a good sign. What I've got to do is export the design now to solar edge um, monitoring, do the commissioning, and then it should start working. So this is just a very rough 3D design. You can see our panels there, a row of eight, pretty much correct in terms of the pitch. And it's saying that the generated, the estimated annual production is four megawatt hours for this. And it's an exact 3.6 kilowatt peak system. So just so you know, these are identical panels. They're all 450 watt, bifacial, all black, low carbon, all the fancy stuff panels they're basically panels that we had left over from job and some of them got broke as you can see in the back of my van so some of them are really smashed and really badly damaged others only a little bit our our solar edge optimizers are currently pairing and we've paired six out of eight so far so it seems like all of the panels are generating oh seven out of eight now seems like all of the panels are generating something the question is how much and when the string voltage starts to really go up, when the inverter starts to power up, will these panels survive or will they catch fire? Or will they just do nothing? Right, so our optimizer are all paired, which means the inverter should start to liven up and we should start to see some generation. Everything's communicating. Oh, ooh, we're ramping up. This is the moment of truth. Wow, well they've passed the insulation test, which is amazing. So the solar edge inverter constantly does an insulation test and it's saying that the insulation reading is greater than 11,000 kilo ohms. So basically it's saying everything's fine. So in theory, 
I should be able to go in to our Solar Edge app now and actually see each panel what it's generating. Well, the sun's really starting to shine on these panels and according to the inverter statistics in the app, it's saying we're generating a full three kilowatt now, which means in theory that all of these panels are working. But the question in my mind is how efficiently are they working? Are they pretty much generating everything that they should or is there a reduction in efficiency? And also, you know, this, is this dangerous? Like, I'm honestly surprised that some, some kind of arcing has not occurred or, you know, something like that already. And if they're actually working as they should, that is really surprising. So the readings are starting to show up in the Solar Edge app and it's really, really interesting because panel number eight here, which is one of the most damaged panels, is actually generating more energy than the others. Now I think it'll take a while for these to balance out, but so far it's saying we've generated 71 watt hours with that panel and the other panels, even the, the non-broken ones, are showing less generation than that. So far, the only panel that's not generating anything is panel three, which is not a broken panel. And panel six, which is damaged, is generating less than the others. But I think we need to leave this a little bit longer for the readings to average out for us to get a true picture of what the system is generating. So join us back in an hour and we'll see what the system's done then. Right, so it's been about an hour now. Um, the sun has been blazing and annoyingly this last panel just keeps falling over. Um, so I've kind of left it, but the data is quite interesting because it's still generating even lying down like that. And that's because it's a bifacial panel. So let's jump in and see the data now and see if all of these panels are generating or some of them aren't generating at all. So, amazingly, they are all generating, but if you look, that one panel there, which is the most damaged one, is actually generating less than the others. Now, these four panels here are the four that are in pristine condition and should be fully working. They've all generated about between just, just under 300 to sort of 336 watt hours of energy. Now these ones are the broken ones and they're definitely running less efficient. 273, 270, 166 and 265. So we can see there is definitely an impact with these broken panels, uh, but they are working, which is what's quite surprised me. To be honest, I didn't think they'd even work at all. Now there's another interesting feature here in the Solar Edge app, which is that I can see the voltage output from each module. Uh, and you can see that there's quite some variation. So that's panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four, panel five, panel six, panel seven, panel eight. Now panel eight is the one that keeps falling over uh, and you can see the voltage there is jumping up and down between about 32 to 37 volts. Then the current in the modules is also quite interesting to see. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now obviously it's spiking up and down when the sun is coming in and out. And it's very hard for me to tell exactly what's going on with this data right now. But what I will do is save this data as a CSV and try and get some kind of analysis on the data from ChatGPT. And I'll share that with our electricians community on school. So if you don't follow us on school yet, definitely worth checking out our electricians community. It's free and you can dive in there and talk about all things electrics. Now I'm gonna pack these panels away before I get into any more trouble with the neighbors because yeah, it's already attracting a lot of attention. But I hope you've enjoyed this little test. It certainly has been fascinating. And I'd like to know if you've got any other tests that we, you'd like us to do. Let us know all your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video, I think you'll really enjoy one of these two videos that are popping up now. So why not settle back, grab a cup of tea and watch one of those.